Hey guys, I'm Mel and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I want to do a little top 10 list. One of the things that people have always commended me on is my ability to pick out individualized gifts for people. So I present to you Mel's top 10 gift giving ideas. All right, let's start from the bottom with number 10, fill a need. I have to make a little note here and just point out the fact that I believe that the most important thing to keep in mind when you're selecting a gift from someone is that you know your audience. You need to stop and think about this person, who they are, what they like, what they need, and how they could potentially react to this gift because people, different people are going to react differently, even to the same gift. So keeping that in mind, the point behind gifting a need, filling a need, is that you say to that person, hey, I see you and I recognize that you need this and I want to be the person to fill that need for you because I love you so much, because I value you, because I care about you, and I want you to have everything that you need in life. And specific personality types, they react well to that. Some people do not. You have some wives who would be upset at getting a mixer, even if it was a very expensive KitchenAid mixer that they have been talking about and going on and on about how they wanted it for a really long time. But if you give it to them on Valentine's Day, they might be upset with you because they were expecting flowers and chocolate and diamonds. Um, so keep that in mind, like keep your audience in mind. I'm a pretty practical person. My husband and I have been together for seven years and my favorite gift he's ever given me is my Sony Bravia big screen TV and I love it and we use it all of the time, every day. It's something that we needed, it's something that we use all the time, but yes, it's something that we use together and he uses as well. So potentially if I was a different kind of person and I reacted differently, I could have been upset with him of buying a gift that wasn't necessarily just for me of why did you waste my gift on this? But I love it. So again, just knowing your audience and know the point behind your gift is the fact that you want to convey how much that you care about that person. And part of caring and loving that person is understanding who they are and how to communicate with them effectively. So moving on, number nine, a star map. This is pretty much the polar opposite of filling a need, at least in my mind. A uh, star map is not something that anybody needs, <laughs> but it is a beautiful gesture and something that's unique and very sentimental and holds a lot of value to people. I made one for my husband as an anniversary gift. And basically what you do is you find these places online that will prepare a star map for you. I'm not a star person. I don't really care for astronomy that much at all. I have no idea how accurate the star maps are. I'm just going to throw that out there. But it's a nice gift. I used underluckystars.com, but there's also a lot of different websites that do the same thing. And you input a date, a time, a location, and it provides you with a star map of that location, what you would see in the sky when you're at that specific location during that point in time. And like I said, I made one as an anniversary gift, so it's a star map of our wedding night and where we were. And you can personalize it with your name and the date and things like that, print it in different colors, different sizes, have it framed, do with as much of it as you want. And like I said, it's a nice and thoughtful gift that you can give somebody. And more cost effective, I think, than naming a star after somebody. And it's tangible and you can hang it on the wall and other people can appreciate it. So check it out. Buy a star map. Moving on to number eight, photo gifts. They say that a photo is worth a thousand words. And in this case, it is worth its weight in gold as far as creating an emotional gift to give someone. There are so many different things that you can do with photos, especially nowadays. There's places like Shutterfly and other places online 
where you can make basically anything with a photo. A mouse pad, a magnet, a coffee mug, a necktie, a pillow, a blanket, Christmas ornaments, like the list goes on and on and on. A puzzle, playing cards, you name it. You can put a photo on it. You can create anything. So maybe somebody needs a new deck of playing cards and you can put a photo on it and make it even more. It's a twofer. Um, but you can be as simple as printing a photograph and framing it to give somebody. There's just so many opportunities and it's a way to invoke emotion and memorialize a moment in time and s create something tangible that they have to hold on to and look back at. Which is really important in this day and time because we do so much stuff digitally and how many of us really do go and print out photos. Number seven, the love book. There's a lot of different things that you can do with the love book. Personally, I highly recommend anyone who is in a romantic relationship to purchase a blank journal and keep tabs on things throughout your relationship, how you feel about stuff, experiences that you've had together, those types of things, because you can utilize them later on, especially if you don't have the greatest memory and that way you can relive those memories even if they're not all sticking with you already in your brain. So the book, the most broad way that you can write a love book is to get a blank journal and to write all the things that you love about this person in this book. It's also something you could start doing say when you met somebody and you're not sure how much of a serious relationship it's going to be, but you start a book anyway. And what you do is you write why you love that person. Every little reason that comes across your mind and things that you do together and anything that builds on those feelings that you have for that person. And say you do end up marrying that person, you could gift them that book as a wedding present or later on in your relationship or something like that. The alternative is to keep a journal and keep that to yourself and then copy some of the things from it and share it later. You know, there's just lots of different things that you can do. If you are not much of a writer and you don't know where to start and you're not really sure how to find your words, there are journals available with prompts. There's one that I found on Amazon called Why I Love You. It has lots of great prompts for different um, levels in different phases of a relationship. There's also places in there to doodle and draw pictures or glue photographs into it in this little pocket in the back where you can add photos or letters or concert tickets or whatever um, that goes along with everything in the book. So you have that where it's kind of sport and helps you along the way. The other option is places online that create them for you. One of those is lovebookonline.com, which I've used before. It's really fun because all you have to do is go in there and create a little stick figure version of yourself and the gift recipient. And then it will insert those stick people into their page. And there's hundreds of pages to choose from that you can put into your book. You can also customize those pages individually but you will create a book that you can print out and give to somebody that is basically the same thing, all the different things that I love about you. And you just received a lot of assistance along the way and it's, it's really cute. So check it out and look into getting a love book. Number six, the mixtape. And I know my terminology is kind of old school, but I'm gonna go with it because of Guardians of the Galaxy. I feel that it still has relevance. But you could also call this a playlist. Um, the goal is just to take music that invokes emotion, songs that have merit in your relationship, songs that you've danced to, things that you've heard when you were out, maybe a song from a movie, soundtrack of a movie that you went to see the first time together, or songs with lyrics that speak to you about that person. But the idea behind that is just utilizing the music, the emotion and the lyrics behind the songs 
to convey your feelings about that person, which is especially helpful if you're not good at using words yourself, that you can kind of borrow them from somebody else and say, hey, I don't know how to say how I feel, but this verbalizes what I don't know how to say. And so I love mixtapes. You probably are not going to find a way to make a cassette or give it to a person who knows has a way to play a cassette, but you can make CDs. You can put songs on a USB stick on a jump drive, put together a playlist that can pl be played on different digital media. So again, consider your audience, consider the recipient of your gift and what the best way would be to share that information. But use the lyrics from songs to tell somebody how much they mean to you. While we're talking about music, I also want to take a little time to shout out to my friend Paul over at Revocation Radio. He actually, whether or not he knows it, gave me the idea to make this video. So thanks, Paul. If you guys haven't heard of Revocation Radio, you should check it out. It streams online so you can listen to it anywhere. And that's at www.myrevradio.com. Number five is the love letter. And I know this is kind of old-fashioned, and you're probably like, okay, that's boring. But at the same time, how many of you have love letters that you have stashed away? How many of you have written love letters? And who out there doesn't want to receive a love letter? Really, because if you don't, like, if there's somebody out there that just thinks that getting a love letter would be the most horrific thing in the universe, please comment below. Reach out to me and tell me why. Please explain that to me. I love receiving letters from people, especially words that affirm me or compliment me or speak any kind of life into me. I absolutely love it in any letter or card that had any value in that regard. I've kept it forever. I have a big box of all of them and I like to pull them out and read them again and again. And I can't imagine anybody reacting in a different way to that. So that would be interesting to me. I do know that it's hard for a lot of people to write them though, and that's understandable. But the more that you write and the more that you learn about how to verbalize your feelings, the better you'll get at it. So just keep trucking along, keep trying, and realize that the other person is probably not gonna judge you on your grammar, on your word choice, or on your ability to write poetry. You really don't need to try to write poetry if you can't. I, yeah, not even. But it's all about sharing your emotions and the way that you feel about that person. And it's not important how that comes out. So just put the pen to the paper and do it. Just do it. You can also take the opportunity to expand, not writing a single letter, but writing multiple letters or cards and things of that nature. One of the ways to do that is with uh, open wind letters, which is something that I think is more popular in military circles or in long distance relationships because you're in a relationship with somebody that you're not with all the time. So you can't experience everything with them. But by giving them a bunch of letters, you can preemptively plan to be there with them during those times. And the idea with that is just that you write letters or cards or things like that on the outside of the envelope, open when dot dot dot, whatever it is you want them to open it, regarding what you put inside of there. Open when you're feeling sad. Open when you miss me. Open when you've had a really bad day at work open when you're not feeling well. And you can do anniversaries, holidays, whatever is pertinent to your situation and the person that's receiving them. And this just gives you a way to provide all of that. Say you have a spouse that's getting deployed and you don't know where they are or if you'll be able to send them anything, that you can give them those letters ahead of time and they'll have something to open and something to look forward to and for different occasions, and that you can provide that support and affirmation kind of in a roundabout manner, like before it even happens. So you have to be a little insightful and know the person well and kind of expect 
what could come and how you could respond to that. But you can also do groups of letters for other things. The 12 days of Christmas, expand any holiday from one day into a week, into a month, the anniversary of anything, make things up. You could create your own holiday or um, memorialize some point in your relationship. This is the first night I took you out for sushi. The possibilities are endless. So do what you can. Write love letters and just write how you feel and give it to the person that you love. Number four, the coupon book. This is a little old fashioned to you, but I think that they're lots of fun and always receive well. So if you're crafty, you could create your own from scratch and do whatever you want with the coupons. But there's also, there's basically an online website to build anything that you can find. There's one online called lovecoops.com that I recommend. It's like love book online. You create little stick figures again, and it inputs those stick figures into the coupons that are already pre-written for you. So you can select so many coupons and put them into your book and um, customize the cover. You can customize any of the coupons or create your own from scratch. So there's lots of opportunity there uh, to be creative, but you don't have to do all the arts and crafty stuff yourself. So it's a great way to gift all kinds of experiences, words of affirmation, all kinds of different things in one. And it also is a way to hand that over to the gift recipient to say, hey, I'm willing to do all these things with you, but the ball's in your court as far as when it happens or, you know, if you, if you want to do that, here's all these things that I propose to you and wait for them to come back and, you know, cash in their coupon, so to speak. <laughs> Number three, a shadow box. Now this is the one item on the list where you're really gonna have to be artistic and creative to do it all on your own. But most of these things, thankfully, you don't have to do on your own. There's somebody else out there. There's probably somebody you can pay to create a shadow box for you. There's also the possibility that if you're not crafty, the person you're gifting it to is crafty. So you could create a kit to build a shadow box and buy all of the things necessary to do it, collect all the trinkets and um, bring the idea as a gift to the person and allow them to put it together since they're the ones who utilize those skills. Or you can also spend the time doing it with them if you want to. The idea behind the shadow box is just, again, it's kind of memorializing events, um, memories, things that have happened in your relationship. And this is a way to present those trinkets and those moments as a tangible gift to the other person that says, hey, I remember this and I want to just you know, set it in stone and hold on to it forever. And it doubles as a focal piece of something that you can hang on the wall that other people can come over and look at and admire and, you know, glean from that emotion in your relationship as well. I made one for my husband with all kinds of, um, just memorabilia from our wedding, from his boutonniere to my tiara to, uh, Doctor Who sonic screwdriver and a book, um, the invitation from the wedding, our vows. There's so many opportunities and different things that you can do with shadow boxes and really kind of take little things that you collect along the way and build it into something beautiful. Now, the very simplified version of this would be to just gift somebody whatever trinket or doohickey that you've been holding on to for years that um, symbolizes a lot about your relationship to you. So maybe the first date that you went on with this person, you went to see a movie and you kept the movie ticket stubs and you had those in a box somewhere. So you wrap them up and you give them to that person saying, hey, you know, remember when we did that. And that is just as great as a gift, but if you put it in a box and decorate it, you can hang it on the wall and everybody else will see it as well. Number two is an experience. Now, a lot of people want 
to spend more quality time in their relationships. I think most of the people that I know when they complain about their spouse or their significant other, they want them to pay more attention to them and spend more time with them. And this is a way of bringing that home as a gift. Now there's a lot of people who would be like, take somebody to a concert and be like, oh, well that was your present, right? And depending on the person, not everybody likes tangible gifts, but most people do. They'll be like, well, that wasn't a gift. I need a gift. So you have to keep that in mind. A way to do that is kind of presenting a like gift basket, gift box, collection type thing that you can tangibly give your experience to that person and not just the event and the day and the memory that comes with it. So say you get concert tickets, you can wrap up the tickets and a CD and a t-shirt and maybe there's a lanyard or um, I don't know, a armband or a magnet or a drumstick or something that's relevant to the band or the experience or that day or maybe you plan to an entire evening so you're gonna go out and eat sushi before so you put fancy pair of chopsticks in it there's all types of things that you can do but create a tangible gift to give to that person before the event happens that says hey this is what I'm planning and this is what we're gonna do together and this is can be as extravagant as planning a two-week you know skiing trip to Colorado or something I don't know uh, traveling Europe, backpacking around Europe. Like there's so many things that you can do or it can be simple and small. Maybe you'll go to a local baseball, like minor league baseball game. And then you don't necessarily have to buy the tickets and put them in there. You could just get a team shirt and, um, you know, some trading guards or something from the souvenir shop and say, hey, I want to take you to a game. Be a foam finger, you know, and plan those events to build memories as opposed to spending money on things that people don't really need or want hanging around. You know, another idea would be a cooking class. Maybe this person has been telling you how they'd really like to learn how to make such and such. Well, you can seek out a place where you can go to a cooking class. You could buy matching aprons for you and them, maybe a utensil that would be useful for cooking, whatever that is, or a cookbook or something like that. Find things that go along with an experience. Maybe a new pair of hiking shoes and you'll go out hiking somewhere or a camera to capture that event. You can think of things that are really small scale, spending less money, or things where you spend more money and get more extravagant. There's all kinds of things on the spectrum here that you can do. It's something that I did a lot when I first started dating my husband because I didn't have a lot of money and he would buy me stuff all the time and I wanted to counteract that with like, oh, let me give you something too. And I would find things around the house like a t-shirt that I had gotten at a baseball game that was too big and I couldn't wear it or some, you know, other free gifts that I had gotten at the ballpark and things like that a book about baseball and wrap all of that up and say, hey, I want to take you to a baseball game. So there's an endless supply of possibilities there. If you struggle with trying to come up with something, feel free to hit me up and I will bounce around some ideas. Like I said, everybody's different. People have different interests, different hobbies. You may not want to do these things with that person, but you may also want to reevaluate your relationship if you don't have anything in common. Um, but you, uh, there's things that you can do to highlight that and not only say, hey, I want to spend time with you and I want to do stuff, but I care about what you like. I care about what you like to spend time with and I want to show you that I'm a part of that. I want to be a part of that. So try gifting an experience and let me know. Have you done this before? Does it work? Has it not worked? Like tell me what you guys think in the comments as far as you know have you done any of these things before? What kind of reaction did you get? Everything that I'm giving you right now 
I have gifted to somebody and I got a great response from. So just disclaimer there. Like they have all worked at least in the instances that I used them. So, um, you know, I don't know. Let me know if you've had a different experience. I'd love to learn. Now to the top item on my list. Number one is to gift a memory. And yes, a lot of the other things on the list are kind of memory gifts. But this is specifically just focused on memory. So yeah, it could be in the shape and form of anything else that I've put on this list. But I kind of equate this to inside joke, little, very small, subtle nuances in your relationship that you hint towards. So let's say that I had a hypothetical story of me going into a grocery store with somebody that I know very well and care about deeply. And while I was there, I wanted an apple and somehow I had it in me that I wanted that very nice, beautifully round, shiny apple that was at the very bottom of the beautifully stacked apple pyramid that was on the display. And not thinking about it at all, I reach for that apple and all of the apples on the little pyramid begin to <laughs> roll down the ground as I grab out for them, trying to keep them from going everywhere and me making a huge scene and looking like a complete idiot in the middle of the grocery store. And so the person that I love is standing there next to me laughing hysterically. <laughs> That's the kind of moment that I'm talking about. So when I go to the store and I buy an apple and I wrap it up and give it to that person as a gift, it's a moment where you both just look at it and laugh. And that's what I'm talking about is like taking some moment in time and reiterating it, bringing it back into this moment and experiencing that emotion all over again. And it works really well. It works the best if the person remembers. So you both equate that instance in your mind the same way. And immediately when you see the apple, that's what you think of and you both can laugh together. It's a little awkward if you gift somebody an apple or a box of saltine crackers or a cigarette lighter and they have no idea what it means and they open it up and they give you that weird look like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Is this all of it? Is there more? Um, that can be slightly awkward and then you laugh and you explain why you got it and the memory behind it and then you can both laugh and laugh even more at you and them and it will be fun. But the point is just to relive that memory. The other side of this is kind of creating memories. Maybe something that didn't actually happen before, maybe it's not physically possible to happen, but you want to embrace things that are different between you and them. So, for example, I like to build things with Lego. My husband likes to kayak. We don't really engage in the other person's activity. We support each other. We encourage it. We'll be there as a cheerleader sometimes and pretend to participate, but not really want to be there. But they're completely different things and they have not a lot in common, right? But if I can find a way to bring them together, it's fun and exciting and it invokes that same kind of passion and energy as, you know, some little silly trinket related to a memory. So using that example, I like to build things out of Lego. I make little displays and dioramas and I enjoy doing that in particular for my family because of our situation, being in a blended family where my husband's children are not a part of our everyday lives, but I want them to be, we want them to be here. We want them to be a part of our family and a part of every event that we do, but that is not always possible. So I make these little Lego scenes with all of the people as minifigs and I can create memories that haven't really existed, but they can still invoke that 
passion and that energy and that idea of us being together and creating something that may not have existed otherwise. One of the other scenes that I've created is of my husband and I on a little raft. So it looks like we're whitewater rafting and it's not something we've ever done together. But again, it's taking our interest, kind of jamming them together and then putting it on display. And I like to make little, little mini fig displays and just hide them in the house and wait for my husband to find them. <laughs> And I think that's fun. So, you know, whatever it is that you do, you can find a way to intertwine that into gifts that you give people or things that you do for somebody. The importance of any of the gifts is just to say, hey, I love you. And this is how I've chosen to show and display that affection, that care and concern that I have for you. And there really is an endless way to do that. Like there are just so many different ways that you can tell somebody that you love them or even better, show them that you love them. Show them what you know. Show them what you know about them and what you've been paying attention to and what you've learned through your relationship and what you remember of everything that you've been through. And remember, again, if you don't have the greatest memory, just write it all down because then you can go back to it and look at it later. If you don't write it down now, you might forget it and then you won't be able to remember it. And, and you, don't, you don't want to gift memories to somebody that didn't happen with them. That's, that's bad. Don't do that. that. That would be a bad idea. All right. Well, that's the end of my 10 item list. But as a nerd who really likes leading zeros, I feel like I need to add one more. So here's your bonus item, number zero, zero, and that's to be spontaneous. One of the things about giving gifts that makes them more heartfelt and more thoughtful to the recipient of the gift is the fact that you are giving that gift because you want to, because you're trying to show that person how much you care about them and not because you're buying them a gift because you're socially expected to it's a holiday or it's their birthday or whatever the reason is that you have some kind of obligation on it. You do not want to buy gifts because you're obligated to. It's a drag. You drag into the store and you're like, I hate that I have to do this and I'm here with a million other people because it's a day before such and such and I have to be here and I haven't gotten any there. Nobody wants to buy that gift and nobody wants to receive it either. You don't want to be like, oh, well, they didn't know what to get me so then they went and got me that Visa gift card that could spend anywhere because they weren't even sure which store to buy a gift card for me from. I, I hate all gift cards as presents, FYI. I mean, they make nice gifts that you can fit inside of cards and give somebody easily, but they don't invoke that kind of emotion and thoughtfulness that giving something like the other items on the list are. So giving gift cards to people that you don't know well and your coworkers and people that you don't see often and things like, that's great. But don't give a gift card to your spouse or your children or your parents. Like, the people who are in your immediate family or the people that you're closest to with your friends, unless they just totally need that and they want that. Again, back to number 10. I don't know, there might be people out there who love that. So you do you and, and get them the gift that they want. But there are a lot of people that will look at a gift card and be like, oh, they didn't spend any time thinking about me. They didn't, you know, put any thought into this. So, Keep that in mind when you go to buy that gift card and I'll be in your head going to do it, don't buy it. <laughs> but back on track with the spontaneity thing. I totally sidetracked with gift cards. I just had a soapbox thing for me. Anyway, um, being spontaneous, you can give gifts outside of the holiday window. And the best part about this is the more that you do that, the less pressure you're going to feel from that person you're giving gifts to to get you gifts on the holidays. So all you men out there who freak out about buying flowers for Valentine's Day or whatever and you missed it and your wife got mad at you or whatever, your girlfriend, I don't know. 
If you buy flowers randomly throughout the year for your spouse, for your significant other, and just come home and be, hey, I love you, and I saw these, and they made me think of you, or I felt like I had to stop by the store and buy you these because I know that you've been going through a lot lately and I wanted to cheer you up, or whatever the reason may be. If you buy flowers periodically through the year, on different days, on occasions, just because that pressure from your significant other to purchase flowers specifically on Valentine's is going to go down lower because they're used to getting them in other points of time and they can just smile and be like, well, my husband buys me flowers all the time when he appreciates me, so it's okay. Like everybody else, this is the only day they're ever getting flowers, so I don't feel bad about it. And it's creating new precedence in your relationship and expectations for gifts. So it kind of alleviates some of that pressure, even though now I'm telling you that you need to buy flowers 10 times instead of one time. But trust me, it's going to help a lot of things. <laughs> this is the way to do it, for real. And if you're really bad at being spontaneous and doing stuff on the fly, you can kind of plan your spontaneity, so to speak. I understand that I'm a planner, I get that. And like I said, if you want to try to buy flowers 10 times in the year, you might have to count that and add it up and put it in your calendar and remind yourself to do that. But if you need to do that, do that. If you can't remember how long it's been and you forget, you bought your flowers or chocolates or brought something to your spouse or your best friend and you can't remember, you're like, oh yeah, that was last month, but it was really six months ago. Like if you can't keep track of things, write it down. Put reminders in your phone that just pick out random dates and be like, note to self, go stop by and buy flowers. Plan your spontaneity. But the point is just to show somebody that you love them outside of social obligation that says, hey, I love you all the time and not just on this day because everybody told me that this is how I have to love you, that this is the gift I have to buy you in order to show you how I care about you. Get outside of that box and say, I love you just because and I love you every single day. And if somebody gets upset at you for not doing something specific on Valentine's Day, Three weeks later, take them out and look them in the eye and say, Hey, I know I failed to give you what you expected on Valentine's Day, but I want you to know that I love you more than what that commercialized holiday means. And all of these people did stuff. I mean, the restaurants were full, the flowers, I mean, the markup on flowers and candies through the roof. I mean, by the day before Valentine's Day, there's probably no cards left in the store. It's a disaster. It's a war zone, guys. But any other day, you can go and you can get flowers for half the cost. And you can pick up, you know, their favorite chocolates or candies without standing in line or having to fight for them. There's so many different opportunities. But take the time to say, hey, I care about you every day and not just that day and I wanted to plan a special time where we could go to the restaurant and the waiters weren't overworked and the place was stuffed full of people and it was so loud we couldn't have a conversation together. I wanted to have something more intimate with you and just all around a better experience that we could do that was unique and special and not the same as everybody else. And people value that. They appreciate that. Like I said, know your audience. Know who you're getting a gift for. It's the most important thing to think about when you're getting a gift. But if you've got somebody that you love and you want to find them something that's thoughtful, heartfelt, something that's different and unique and, you know, different from what you've usually done or usually seen from others, try out any of these 10 items and then again, give it a shot. Be spontaneous. Do something outside of the norm. Get outside of the box and see how this person that you love reacts to that. And let me know. Let me know how it goes. Leave me a comment down below. Hit me up on social media. 
Tell me what you think of these ideas, if you've tried them before, if they worked, if they didn't work, if you think that I'm insane. Um, let me know if you liked the video, if it was too long, if you want more stories about each one. I could probably go on for 40 minutes about each item that I did, show you videos of all the different things that I've created in every different manner. Um, but I'm sure nobody wanted to watch all of that. I don't know. If you do, let me know. Um, I'm Mel. I'm creating YouTube videos for this channel, even though I really have no idea what direction I'm going in. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.